Been looking forward to this now all day. Talked to Tommy Walsh about the hurling that took place over the weekend. There were two unbelievably um, mad senior games in many respects. But what about the minor final as well? How are you getting on, Tommy? Yeah, good evening, Johnny. I have to say, seven or eight minutes ago in Crow Park yesterday on Sunday, um, the tension in the ground, the noise. I was thinking, how are you getting on on the radio and how are you getting on? <laughs> Look, you know, I was kind of half off air at the time. I wasn't coming back on for five minutes ago, so the headset was off and I was able to enjoy the occasion. I was magical because any game, Johnny, where the underdog is in with a chance of maybe shocking the, the favourites or shocking the champions, I think everybody but, uh, say, from Limerick yesterday was excited. What's going to happen now? Can the Limerick lads respond? Can Galway get maybe a goal and get over the line? So huge excitement. And I suppose for yourself, you are nervous, but for the neutral, you could enjoy the occasion. Right, we've a lot to talk about. Let's go back to Saturday. Um, you've had another day to kind of take it all in. Uh, Brian Cody's record in semi-finals, sensational going in. He said they didn't want to lose the third one. Um, lots of talk about Clare not showing up. Tony Kelly being basically marked out of the game. TJ Reid's performance. We've an awful lot to get through. Um, just starting with the the Kilkenny performance initially. Did it surprise you? Uh, their shooting accuracy. Um, I think they hit one wide in the first half. Were you as gobsmacked as the rest of us? Uh, I wasn't, but I suppose what impressed me most, Johnny, was their ability to bring the ball out of the back line. We've seen them trying to do it up in Salt Hill against Galway in the round-robin game in Leinster, and they coughed up a good few scores, including a goal in that first half, trying to bring the ball the modern way, that if there was too many, say, a sweeper back in the van, could be Parag Mannion or that back in the Galway back line, don't drive it long. Bring it out, give it to the lad in the best position, which is easier said than done, Johnny. I'm still playing the club game. It looks easy to do when you're up in the top of the Hogan stand. You can see everybody that's free. But when you're down on the ground with the ball, after fighting hard to win it, there's two or three lads racing to tackle you. It's not so easy to pick out a lad over maybe 30 yards over the right-hand sideline or out around the middle of the park. It's much more difficult when you're in the game. They found that up in Salt Hill. They coughed up a lot of scores. So then you're starting to doubt yourself. Should we go back to the long ball? Which they did in that second half up in Salt Hill. And listen, Galway ended up winning the match via point. The same thing happened below in, in Nolan Park. The last round robin game against Wexford. Everyone was saying Wexford were gone. Kilkenny Kenny hot favourites. They launched ball after ball after ball from the back line down to the full forwarding, which reaped so many all the medals in the past. So much of Brian Cody's successful tenure was, was built around the foundation of a back line winning their own ball and getting it up as fast as they can to the forward line. That is all after change now. And the first time I've seen that, I suppose, play to a high level was, was last weekend. I was, play, I was in the Davin stand, Johnny, so you could see it perfectly. So when the back line got the ball, if they could find a man, they would find him. If not, then they're under pressure to drive it long. So, so was that, like Cody spoke about this after the game, the four-week gap, and TJ Reid mentioned it as well, which generally would be perceived as a negative thing, but he spoke about their, I think, the training camp, their, their training sessions in general. Were they able to sort of work hard on that in the four weeks, or is it something that you kind of need game by game from the, the goal game into the Leinster final might have been an improvement, and then this was the, another improvement again? Yeah, no, I would say anyone that's Try a bit of both. Anyone that's trying to change their method of playing, Johnny, it needs to be done first on a training ground so you can get comfortable in, we say, not a win-lose scenario. You can get comfortable that if you make the mistake, learn from the mistakes and go again. So if you look at the way the, the championship and league is structured now, from the minute they go back in February, it's game after game after game. Two weeks off then, and then it's game after game in, in the championship in the round robin. So there is no time to practice these really uh, under high-pressure circumstances as regards intensity and training without the consequences of winning or losing a championship or a league game. So I think this four weeks was crucial for them in regards practicing that method. But also, the way it's gone now, you need a break. And I'm delighted as well that the provincial champions are now getting, I suppose, the reward for being provincial champions, Johnny. Interesting. So who, yeah. suffered, yeah, who suffered the most was Clare and, and Galway. Um, you know, because they'd go week after week, and you know, the two provincial champions are, are, are true and they're true to the All Ireland final, and they got the break that they deserved for taking it. Now, I know they all took it seriously, but they went out and won it. But the, Kilkenny's, the standard of Kilkenny's performance, not only the, their hounding in the first half, but their shooting accuracy and their use of the ball, like it, it just looked like it was, it was almost like a perfect Kilkenny performance in some respects. Yeah, and 
Um, I suppose defensively, like um, Brian Cody often speaks about, he doesn't want a settled team. He wants a settled spirit. He wants a settled squad. But if you look behind, I suppose, that story, what is happening here with the Kilkenny team over the last few weeks, the team is starting to settle down. So the back line, that same full back line is there. The same half back line is there. Adrian Mullen is now, you know, he's after overtaking Tony Kelly, I think, in championship scores from play so far. So these guys are settling into their positions. Like, say, this time six months ago, you're wondering, is Adrian Mullen going to be full far? Is he going to be wing far? Is he going to be midfield? Now he's out around that middle third. Keane Kenny, who had a, a bright start to his league, league campaign, he went off colour for a couple of weeks. But I said at the time, with a young player, Johnny, you come in... And it's, it's, it's a big step up. So the only way for that player, a young player, 20, 21 years of age, to make the step up is stay playing him. And he'll get used to it. And slowly but surely, he'll start getting used to playing in the big time. And that's what's after happening, Keane Kenny. He's, you know, scored 1-2 again the other day, but won some crucial frees in that first half period when, when the game was won. So, listen, I, I think the Kenny backline, the team is starting to settle down. Mossy Keown, who was having a, a tough enough time of, uh, in the first half, his work rate was still phenomenal. And listen, the, he got the goal. It was Mossy got the goal through sheer, you know, dogman-like performance. Went in, the ball was saved. He stayed going ball into the back of the net. And that's the joy of a team. You saw Limerick the weekend. Some of them weren't at the top of their game, but to put in some big shifts for different stages of the game. But you mentioned Mossy Cohn, like your 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 fellow club mate. Like the fact he was then subsequently taken off straight away by Brian Cody. I just thought there was never a more Cody thing to do. He just scored a goal after a fairly frustrating first half. Then he's taken off. That that to me seemed classic Cody. And the second half, you know, obviously Wally comes in, played very well. And it's like this thing about a settled panel, not a settled team. And they're all still playing. They're all still playing for Kilkenny. And he showed that ruthless streak as well. Yeah, and plus the game is after changing. Um, like when we were all playing that time, like you're playing half back. I'd say if you had to put the GPS on you, you could be man of the match and you might be only after running the K because you're just going, you know, you're, you're, where's the ball going? I'm going to get there and I'm going to win it. Brian Wheel and, um, you know, Brian Hogan, uh, say Paddy Marr, all these great, you know, wing backs from the different teams. They didn't run a whole lot. They were just wherever the ball was. Towards now, if you're a half back, you're sprinting after your lad back into the fence, then you might be sprinting him up to him. He could be gone back into his own defence. You have to sprint after him. So you're doing huge mileage now at the moment. So that's why the key... And Brian Cody, you know, I think when the, when the Kilkenny team won, was it one of the all earns 2008 all earned only brought on maybe one or two subs. But now he's learning. You can't do that anymore. The game has changed. Even though, you know, a player might be playing particularly poorly, you have to bring on fresh legs. And Walter Welch came on, he got a few scores and, and some more of the subs came on as well and played quite well. So he knows the value now that you have to have finishers as well. I think that was apparent in the Leinster final as well. Kenny's um, panel is quite strong. Like they are, I mean, you could see Limerick flexing their muscles in the last 10 minutes in that regard yesterday. But would that give you encouragement ahead of the final that like Kenny can change it up if needs be? Yeah, because I suppose if you looked at the bench against Clare, you had Wally on the bench, you had uh, Richie Hogan on the bench, you had David Blanchfield who... We all spoke quite highly. A young player, which you need coming into teams, played so well in the early uh, parts of the league. But And he plays with his club, Bennis Bridge, in the Kilkenny Club Championship. And they play that modern game where you, you play the ball. Glenmore used to do it years ago. Do you remember the great Willie O'Connor and Eddie O'Connor mm. at Christy Heffernan? They played this game back in the early 90s, would you believe, Johnny? And uh, when I used to be going to games as an eight or a nine-year-old, and just... They were just so comfortable with the ball. Will Bennis Bridge do that now at club level in Kilkenny for the last 10 years? And David Blanchfield is a, a massive part of that. So they can bring him on uh, because you're going to have to be able to play that game uh, against Limerick. So, yeah, no, absolutely. They've, they've a great panel. And I think, you know, individually, if you take away the whole Brian Cody culture of work, ma, ma, you know, work ethic, spirit, uh, toughness, take them as individuals. They're all brilliant, brilliant hurlers. You're talking about a couple of young hurlers of the year. I see some of them in Kenny club, hurler and, uh, club hurling and they're impossible to mark as well. So, listen, Kenny have a good team uh, coming and I've been, you know, beating that drum for the last 12 months. Talk to me about TJ Reid, where he stands in the pantheon of the great hurlers after that performance at 34 years of age. He had a role in so many of the scores, even the first half that he didn't score, there was that memorable, memorable um, steal that I, I forget who he robbed the ball off straight out of his hand, score in the first, that was about 12 minutes in. Um, 
Is, is this down to I know he's a great hurler, but is this down to his gym work and keeping himself in shape? Because it shouldn't. He should. He's defying the laws of hurling almost at this stage with that good. I mean, you, I was wondering yesterday what a lift if Joe Canning had come in. Joe Canning left for good reasons. This lad still at thirty four looks nearly as good as ever. Yeah, and um, I suppose he has the gym, so he's able to do it in his, you know. <laughs> In his, in his own pad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's he's, 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 he's so, promoting his gym uh, just by virtue of still playing hurling, I think. Absolutely, Johnny, yeah. And, you know, he's, if you like, he's nearly a professional then, isn't he, really? Mm. He's in around the gym. He's then to do his couple of bits and pieces and then go off training, I suppose, that evening. So, uh, And he's 100% committed to the cause as well. Um, where does he lie in the pandits of the Kilkenny greats, anyway? Well, I would go back to, the say, the early years. You had Laurie Marr. Then you bring it back, then up, I'd say the next great, in my eyes, now listen, I know different lads will have different bins, was Kerr. Like the way my father, my uncle Dick, and a few of the guys that would have seen Kerr hurling, they speak about Kerr the way we speak about DJ, the way we speak about TJ and, and Henry and JJ Delaney. They're my greats. So if you have Laurie Marr, Eddie Kerr, DJ, Henry, JJ and TJ. So I think they're geniuses, like comparable to Tom Brady, American football, mm. um, Ronaldo, Messi, and top. They're the ten out of teners for me. And then there's, I played with a lot of nine point nine out of teners too. But these lads were, you know, that's where you're talking. And I don't think there's any uh, debate about that. He's up there, right? With him. It's just where does he sit? It's hard to compare different players from different eras. Why um, do I put him up there? Because he he's after doing everything for. A, a, a consistently for a, a long period like from he was 17 years of age playing from Bally Hill and this before he brought in the gym like the gym and the physical side of the only temper PJ after he hurt his knee in the 2012 baller and final against Galway so he, he struggled in with injury for the next couple of months or a year but spent a large proportion of his time in the gym and that's where he went from the 8 9 out of 10 PJ Reid that uh, Eddie Kerr, Henry Shefflin, JJ Laney, DJ Perry type of fella. Yeah, I'll, I'll actually talk about it in a in a bit as well in relation to the Limerick team and um, you know the, their physicality. But just just on Clare, Tommy, like I think the five off the ball tips on OTB AM on Friday morning were all for Clare, which I thought was a bit mad in a game that looked a bit fifty fifty. But nobody predicted this collapse. I mean, were they over the top? Were they trained to peak too early? What happened? Yeah, I think what happened there is. Everybody thought that the Wexford game, so they, ha- they were the boys of the summer up to up to the Wexford game, as in they were just playing out of their skin. Everyone, you could say, was getting the most out of themselves. And the Wexford game, then we started to see, and we were wondering, was it a hangover from the Munster final? But they showed great determination, and they showed a focus that we don't care if we're getting beaten. We don't care if the game is going against us. We're here for 74, 75 minutes, and we'll be there at the end and win the game. They've done that. So everyone thought they got the fright that they needed and that they would be back flying it again for this day. But I, I suppose what no one took into account was the structure of the championship. So they've been going at the top of their game since the 1st of May or the last week in April. That was when the, the championship started. I don't think that you can keep it going at their level for two months without suffering some sort of a dip at some stage. If you go look at all the rest of the counties, Kilkenny suffered their dip, um, Cork suffered their dip at, at times, Galway suffered dips, Clare never had a dip mm. until uh, two weeks ago. And I just think it just comes down to science, really, that they just couldn't keep it going for so long. You're wondering, did they peak too early? No, because the structure of that monster championship, if you don't peak at you're that out. stage, yeah. you're out. Yeah, so this is the thing we'll say for the likes of Galway, Wexford and Kilkenny that they can kind of, um, and it's a, it's a real thing here, like, you know, Wexford drew against Westmead and still stayed in the championship. You're not going to get away with that in Munster. No. No, you're right. Because, um, you know, in Leinster, you're talking about six teams. You're talking about, you know, probably bar a shock, it's between four. Mm. Kilkenny, Galway and, um, and Dublin. You know, a bar of shock. Now, and I say that because it, shocks can happen too. But at the moment, that's what you'd be saying. Towards in Munster, it's five versus five and anyone can get out. So, like, what, you can tell Henry Shefflin went to bed last night thinking in 2023 what could happen with Galway. It might it might be a small bit different with Brian Lohan because, I mean, this year has ended in, in a really desperate 
desperate de- defeat for them. But what does he reflect on for 2023? Because obviously Clare weren't a million miles off a few weeks ago. Yeah, no, I think he'll be happy. I think just the calendar caught up with him. So I think it's just give him a break now, let him back to their clubs. I wouldn't even be having any meetings or anything like that. Nobody comes back unfit anymore. They get their gym programs to do once their club campaign finishes up, and I'd leave them off there till they go back whenever it is in January the first. I I don't see anything at all. Try and bring in a few new players. So Brian Law will have to go searching in the in the Clare Club Championships. We seen Limerick on Sunday. You think that with with say Lynch and Casey on the bench, right? We bring them on to win the game. No. They found another new player. I'm not saying they found a player, but he wouldn't have been at the top of my list mm. as a game with David Reedy. But he's the lad that won a firm. So I would say to Brian Lowe, and he'll have to search the Clare com- club campaign and see, can we find one more player even just to, you know, that might get us over the line in one big game. <laughs> like, I mean, you look at next year, Waterford and Cork will have um, massive uh, issues in terms of their own progress and Tipperary as well. Just on the Kingston situation at Cork, um, where do they go from here? Yeah, sure. If they get a new manager now and, you know, who are they going to get? I'm not sure what their process is. They were talking about on the Sunday game last night, but I there's a lot of talk about outside managers, Liam Sheedy's, Eddie Brennan's and uh, and the like, Davy Fitz. I would be shocked if Carver went outside the county for a manager. Um, and no more than Kilkenny or Tipperary, traditional big tree, um... There's so many people within these counties that would love the job, that have given their lives, they will say, car hurling. I think they deserve a chance, you know, and um, I, I just would be shocked if it, if, if like, say, if, if, if the Kilkenny job came up now and it was given outside our county, I, I'd be raging, you know. With all due respect, now, I don't think you're comparing like with like. Which, well, you can't compare you can't compare with Kilkenny with anyone. Kilkenny's like um, a hereditary dictatorship, nearly at this stage. I mean, Brian Cody is is God. We've we've seen how he reacted with uh, Henry Shefflin in terms of going outside the county. Kilkenny is definitely an outlier, is it not? <laughs> ah, no, just at the moment with Brian, I suppose, and he's been so successful, you know. But regards Cork, like, why not bring in one of your own, like Don Logue? You have. Um, you know, Ben O'Connor, like there's lads that have done great stuff in the club game, like Pat Ryan with the under-21, himself and Wayne Sherlock. So I think they've great guys there. So listen, that's only my opinion. I'd be shocked if they go outside Carr. Just lastly on Brian Cody, I know everyone wants to talk about a settled team. I make it clear that I'm only interested in a settled panel. Everyone fighting for their place and knowing if we put them on, who knows what team we'll pick for the next day, but it's whatever team we pick is the right team to pick. It's about having that absolute spirit in the whole panel where where everybody respects everybody else's opportunity that if they earn the right to play, they shouldn't play. What can you say about the man all these years later that he's still obviously evolving as a manager as you alluded at the start of the interview. They're back in another All-Ireland in final after arguably one of Kilkenny's you know best performances under Cody in all the two decades at Crow Park yeah well we had great performance in 2019 all Ireland semi-final against Limerick mm. no oh, we had a chance and we beat him in one of the great semi-final performances we had a great performance in 2016 semi-final against Watford uh, replay we were five points down the first day in Crow Park came back from the dead I was at the game in the Cusick stand still don't know how we came back that day Went down to Turles. I think that was under lights. And um, another great, great day. But it was a semi-final, Johnny. You get no All-Ireland medals. You get no Lee McCarthy Cup for playing well in semi-finals. This is all about the final for Kilkenny. This is all about the final for Brian Cody. If they lose the, the final, Brian Cody knows. He's been lauded this week. If they get beaten in the final again, you know, the criticism will be out. So he'll know. He needs to get these guys ready for, for two weeks' time and... You know, I make no secret of that fact. How, what's Henry Shefflin's um, general thoughts today? Penny for his thoughts. What are you thinking? Uh, I'd say so disappointed. I would be anyway um, because the, Henry Shefflin is a winner. Like, you know, and great performance. Like, talk to any of the clear lads after the Munster final. Like, the whole country was praising him. But they were so disappointed. They get they turned the kitchen sink that day, as John Kiley said, at Limerick to come home at Munster medal. Well, Henry Shefflin isn't driving two and a half hours up the road uh, for the last six or eight months to get to an All-Ireland semi-final. He's there to win things. This is a guy that won so much as a player with Kilkenny. He won so much as a player with Ballyhale and then went on and won two club All-Irelands as well with Ballyhale as a coach, manager. 
So this guy wants to win, so he'll be disappointed and just back to the drawing board board and try and um, find a few new players. I think they're going to have to try and find new players to, to help with her. Yeah, but, and even, you know, you look at some of the young players that he extolled coming through, like, the, it, it, it has even taken them time, like, so it's not something that necessarily happens over the course of a year. And then you're looking at maybe David Burke and a few other players who are getting that base older as well. Um because I don't know, it looked like Tommy tactically he he nearly got it spot on. Like all we were a point up with with without Connor Whelan really being in the game, they were a point up with what nine minutes to go. Um, just lost again. You, you mentioned Reedy coming on, so tactically he he seemed to get it near, fairly spot on. Yeah, and um, I suppose like Grealish was after having a great campaign. Morrissey, I thought Fintan Burke, and trying to talk about the new players mm. around guys that have been the the spine since two thousand seventeen. So all them guys on the wings in the corner say Cottle Mannion is still at a great age. Um, up front, Connor Whelan is still at a great age. So I think them young players now need to turn into the Dotty Burks, the Groen McInerney's, the David Burks. And then the Tom Monlins and Ronan Glennons come in, the young players behind them. You go back to when Kerry started off in their famous run back in you know, the mid-70s. Mick O'Dwyer brought in, I think it was 75, brought in all them new young players. Started off with lads are 19, 20, 21 years of age and look where that got them so Galway have won a lot of minors they've been contesting uh, under 21s as well for the last couple of years it's now to start to throw faith in these guys throw them in, get them used to the big time and hopefully the likes of Whelan and these guys then, they'll be your, your main players and they can slowly but surely then you know, turn into a a more younger team I suppose What did you make of the occasion in general because like Keane Lynch's the roar when he came on even though he he had a peripheral role in the game it was a bit demoralising for Galway that they'd you know these subs to bring on Keane Lynch the roar the subsequent finish and I, there all, almost seems to be a feeling around this Limerick team that they just expect to win Yeah yeah you're right and he's a crowd favourite Lynch because of the way he hurls the way he conducts himself Pierre Casey got a huge roar as well because mm. the one thing GA people hate is long-term injuries and you feel for him because you probably know someone in your club that happened to us, know someone in your county. So when Casey started warming up the roar, it lit, nearly lifted the whole stadium. Five seconds later, Keane Lynch comes down to warm up, the roar was even louder. So it is magical to be there at uh, them type of occasions and isn't it a great time to be a Limerick person that the supporters aren't getting carried away. The supporters aren't growing complacent and they're not turning up to these games. When I was walking up to that game yesterday, it was like Limerick outnumbered Galway two or three to one. Oh, ten to now, one nearly, yeah. Yeah. Now I did I would say that when I was at the game then, when you heard the different roars for the different <laughs> scores, it was more fifty fifty, yeah. I think I think Galway people had to roar twice as loud because we we kind of knew we were, we were well out uh, out most of that in that regard. But uh, I, there's one moment for me. Just, just, huh? I, I, the only thing I'd say is I wouldn't take that um, personally as a Galway supporter because when we were going well in, in the, the mid nineties, Cork were coming with this against against us, but their supporters were outnumbering us again two or three to one. But it was just because of the sheer number of them that support hurling in the county. And I think Limerick is a massive county as well as regards hurling followers and hurling supporters. So I think, you know, we're all supporting our own counties. It's just they're able to bring more numbers to it. Just finally on this, can I can I get your word on, like there was so much chat about the brawl last week and Croker and all this negative chat. I don't know if you remember when um, Kyle Hayes sort of stood on Tom Monaghan and and could have been it could have been um, you know thought to be a sort of a stamp and the Galway lads made absolutely nothing of it nothing it was the most sporting game the way it was played and it was like the best team win it was so physical but like you can tell there's a lot of respect there as well yeah and it goes back to I suppose tradition and pride uh, Johnny a hurler's a hurler man's pride is nearly in being tough being hardy and like you know, the belt that Seamus Flanagan, I still think of the Flanagan belt he got in the, the Munster final. Mm. He didn't even look around. It was like, I don't care, I'm just going to go on with this. He wasn't trying to get anyone sent off. He's just, no, I'll take it. And, and it's kind of a, it's, it's a kind of a game where we learn from our own fathers, our own grandfathers, our uncles, that you give a belt and you take a belt and you get on with it. Don't, you, you're not going to start, it's, it's, it's more kind of a Premier League thing or a, you know, over in the La Liga where you start diving around trying to get someone sent off. You just don't do that. This is the way we were reared. And I think long may it continue. And what I would say is when someone does dive, 
in the GA world, like Gaelic football is the same. It is frowned upon. Mm. Like, mm. You know, it has happened once or twice in the past. I'm not going to bring up the, the individual case. I do remember him, but I'm not going to bring him up now and bring up lads' names. But when it happened, I'd say they regret it because the amount of, you know, I suppose abuse and scorn that was directed towards them for fame and an injury or that was, was unbelievable. So nobody wants to be that lad. You want to be the lad that gets the belt and gets on with it. You're used to doing it in your garden from when you were four or five years of age, you know? Yeah, I, I hope Hurling never changed in that regard. And uh, I, I just thought it was an amazing uh, sporting occasion. Finally, Tommy, what advice have you for the Offaly Hurlers? You know, I was coming into the ground yesterday. They were a point up in injury time. Um, turned around and they were they lost the game by a point. And the, the sight of the young Offaly players falling to the ground as if, you know, they'd been shot. It was just horror in their faces. What advice have you? They're, they're young lads that, that, that obviously can, you know, build on this. Yeah, and um, a couple of things around that, Johnny, as well. As the first thing I would say is congratulations mm. to the Tipperary young, uh, young players and their families. So in the midst of all this, we can forget that yeah. some of them guys might never, you know, darn the senior count. This could be the biggest moment of their careers. And they did, their family, you know, they might be used to these huge occasions, 27, 30,000 people added. So well done to them for keep going and keep going. And I think the reason that so many people were devastated for Offaly is the underdog. We exactly. all can associate the Brary, Kilkenny, Cork, Galway, Clare, but being at the top table and winning things. With Offaly, where they're coming from, they're trying to drive it from a, a small base, playing hurling and football. And, um, you know, that's where people's emotions are coming from in regards to this final, just a, a bit of background behind it. So for Offaly, um, it, listen, it was devastating. You know, like I... I I was up at the game yesterday, the Galway and Clare game, and to be honest, it took the enjoyment away from watching the second game. I was heartbroken for them Offaly lads, you know? And then I came home, it was home around nine o'clock, half nine, Marlies had the Sunday game on, and she was just telling me about their, you know, hugging their parents and their crying, and next minute, this Cal brought up that was showed later, I said, Marlies, turn it off. I couldn't watch it. And then off from Offaly, frankly, Kenny. I just couldn't watch it, and even today, it's on about it's tough. And my advice to the lads is, um, I was like say, when, when we were intermediate with Holler Own, we lost semi finals, and then we were playing our biggest rivals, Valley Callan, in the final, lost that as well. And their biggest day was last Saturday, last sun, was Sunday there at half one. This was my biggest day because this was my dream, and I know how they're feeling. I really do. Heartbreaking. You're blaming yourself. What should I have done in this semi final? Or you're thinking the things you've done and, and we could have got over the line. You just have to stay going. You stay going because for these awfully minors, if you think of the other side of it, these ads are only 15, 16, 17. Imagine if they had to won last, last Sunday. Would that never top it? I don't think so. I think it would be the greatest day of their sporting lives and they'd spend the rest of their careers and they've another, we'd hope, to play to their mid thirties, another 20 years of, of, of top-level hurling or club hurling or colleges or schools and they'll be chasing the, that high, that thrill of last Sunday, toward, which would be impossible to do, Johnny. So now, get back to the drawing board, they'll be disappointed for a couple of weeks, get back to the club, try and win something with your club, whether it's a blitz or whether it's a tournament or a county final, same at the school, same at the colleges. Try and go on and play under 20, 20 or senior with Offaly and drive it on. And listen, you will be rewarded. And I think it was, I got great um, confidence from I think Liam Sheedy was and said his mum or someone said to him that time was, uh, what's for you won't pass you. And there's sayings like that, like if it's, if it's meant for you, it'll happen. Everything happens for a reason. You have to cling, I think, to faith and them kind of sayings to keep you going now and they will have great days individually and as a team in the next couple of years stay going and when they do eventually win won't it, the feeling be even all the, the more better like. Yeah, it's funny you say that because it was Galway's lack of success at senior level for so long was often blamed on the fact that the minors in the 21s just knew what success was and they were used to it and as you say what can top it Tommy, it's been brilliant to talk to you thanks a million Thanks Johnny Best of luck Bye bye